something I've been working on and then I left go for a while and I'm going to go back to it and I'll be working on it throughout this winter and I wanted to show it uh, might be some interest. On my 9 by 20 Enco lathe on the back there's a plastic gear. You have all the gearings metal except one and that's so if you jam it it'll rip off the teeth and save everything else. I seen one on sale for eBay and a guy wanted a good bit of money for it and I thought I'm going to see if I can make one. Well I come up with a way to pour it, pour plastic and make it, didn't work out right. Anytime you have anything like that you have some failures but this time I think I might have come up with it. So I want to show the back of my lathe and you can see right here is an 80 tooth or a uh, 80 teeth gear the plastic one and that's what I want to make it's a flat gear and then it comes out here and it's got a protrusion here and it's got a keyway in it this will be machined I think the teeth off of the lathe because when I tried to pour it these teeth are so fine they they want, doesn't want to come out of the mold right so I'm figuring how to do this on cut it on the lathe uh, cut the teeth on the lathe and then bore the hole through then I can put the keyway in just by hand. So what I have over here is I have an 80 tooth gear that's metal to work with. That's the exact same thing as that plastic gear but this one's for the bottom to change the feed uh, when you set up for threading or stuff like that. So that's what I want to copy. A good while back I was thinking about making how to make these gears on the lathe and I come up and I design this and what it is is that metal gear will fit on here this thing I have to make spring loaded yet but it'll go in and go into the teeth so I can cut a gear uh, you know pull this out turn it one tooth put it back in cut a gear and it'll be set on the lathe something like this now the gear I'm going to make, I'm going to drill two holes in and this is a platform for it so that the plastic gear I make and the metal gear will be on one shaft so they turn exact amount. That's how I'm going to do it. That's how I have this set up. But first I have to figure out how to make the plastic gear for here. That metal one will fit in here and I tighten it down, it holds it tight but I can still turn this. I have to have this so it can turn. That's the reason there's not in here to uh, hold this together, but I can still make it so it'll turn. So to pour it, I have found on eBay, and uh, I looked on YouTube and I seen uh, some about this. I've read up on it, and it tells uh, about different hardnesses of plastic and stuff. And this is a two-part, it's like epoxy, but it's not epoxy, it turns into a plastic. And there's two parts, it's 50 to 50 mix. It says it starts to get hard in like 10 minutes, but uh, when I pour mine, I'm going to pour a blank. And I'm going to make it extra thick so that this protrusion here, I'll cut down and I'll have it come out further so I can get it in a lathe or I could just machine this on back a little further and then cut it off, face this side off first. I'm figuring out I can, how I can do this the best to cut all this without taking it in and out of the lathe. Just put it in once and cut it and get it all the same. And this stuff, when you mix it, uh, you start mixing it, it turns like a, oh oily almost like a oily color then it'll when you pour it and let it set it turns to a white I pour a little bit in a cup and that's what it's like I had some in here and I can see that this is really tough stuff it is just like plastic now if you want to make a part for something your bike car anything you had a plastic part you want to make you could make maybe get play-doh put your part push it down in there and make you know make an impression of it pour it and then have it and or you could even pour it bigger like I'm going to do machine it down to what you want you can drill this stuff tap it uh, I mean it's fantastic stuff and uh, I want to see the name on it amazing casting resin and it's sold by www. 
mollyputty.com. But on uh, eBay, it was showing it, and I watched uh, YouTube about it. And one thing, I have it right here. When you go to get this stuff to make a plastic part, it's Aluminolite Amazing Casting Resin, 16 ounce. You have to have that uh, name, Aluminolite. A-L-U-M-L-I-T-E, Aluminolite. That is the kind of plastic that gets hard that you want. But it's still, it still, it feels like regular plastic because it is a little bit, you can see it bends a little wee bit. Oh, it's tough. And that's what I want. So, now, how much of this and what am I going to pour it in? Well, for a release agent, when I was uh, fooling with this before, trying to mold, I had a thing and I drilled two holes in it out of this water putty. It's just like uh, powder, it looks like flour, you mix it up and it gets hard. I was making some molds for this, but I can't get the teeth to come out right. I tried powder, but I found better was canola oil. So. I'm going to get the, uh, when I pour this, this I found a can that fits, and you can see it looks perfect. I need some out around the machine and do my work and everything. So I got that to start with. Now, the question is, how can I figure out how much to mix so I don't waste my stuff, but if I was going to say, make this I want it higher thicker than this so I put it in here and what I did was you can even set it down here and I took my depth gauge and I go down right there now that's the thickness from here to the other side so I got it's about uh, 630 thousandths, it's almost uh, 5 eighths. So we'll take it to 650, 650 thousandths. That's the thickness of this. But I'd like to go maybe even another inch to have something I can put in the lathe to grab so I can turn it. So I'll add another inch. So instead of uh, like 5 eighths, I'll put an inch in 5 eighths. So there's an inch, 600 and 50 thousandths, uh, 5 eighths would be uh, 625, but just a little extra. Now, I set this in here, I'm gonna put this on the back side and see how high I'm gonna come up. See from there, from the middle part, I'm gonna be coming up about an inch, and that's what I want. So that's how much I need of this to pour in that can. So, I have my can and what I'm going to do is there's grooves down in there so if anything I'm going to get a little extra so I'll put it about right here a little mark right in here now that's how much of that plastic I'm going to need to put in here to make that part Now to know the amount of plastic I need, you can see I filled that with water right to that mark. There's a mark on here, but I don't need that. Okay, so now I take this and I put it in here. Now I can see it's right here. So what I can do is see on here that's 10 ounces. That's right on 10 ounces. This is, uh, I think, 8 ounce uh, bottle, and I've been using some of it. But what I'll need is 5 ounces of each. So it might be all that I have there, I'll have to check. But anyway, that shows 10 ounces, so I'll need five ounces of this and five ounces of this. So now I know I need five ounces of each to make 
this part I want to have enough to come up it could be a little bit less it wouldn't hurt but uh, that's about what I'd like to have so after doing some measurements I found to make what I need for this I'm gonna need three of these little containers I have filled up three of this and three of this mix it up and that'll pour it in that can and it'll make my uh, thickness so this stuff there's one two three of those then once I go to mix it you have to get at it and mix it because uh, it says to mix it like 30 40 seconds <clears throat> and then it's going to uh, want to react so you got to get in there and mix it it said to scrape the bottom the sides and you want to then pour it in what you want now I sprayed that canola oil in here real good I put paper towel down, set it upside down, left the, some of that drain out. But I'm using that can because then I can just take a hacksaw and cut the sides and across the bottom and get it out. But I believe they make like a rubber molding stuff that you can uh, make casts with. Now that might work. But I'm doing it this way. I'm just going to try it and see how it is. And it's starting to turn a little milky already. So I want to hurry up. You can see it's kind of milky in there. So I want to hurry up and start stirring it. And they say to stir it good. And then I'll just pour it into the can. Whatever I got, I got. I could have maybe left it in this uh, plastic container. Yeah, look at that. Uh, I didn't spray it with canola oil. Well, yeah, I don't know. Let me see my gear. Yeah, I might want it in a can. It'll be a little bigger out further because I want to have enough to machine and stuff like that. Now, it really looks clear in there now. And this stuff gets hot. It says don't mix it in styrofoam. Uh, use paper cups, something like that. Well, I've been using this plastic and it seems to work good. This stuff is sticky. Man, when you uh, get it on your fingers, that stuff is so sticky. That's why with the can, I think I'll have a good uh, uh, chance of getting it out. Now, I've mixed that for a while. And I'll probably let it set for an hour or so. Uh, they're saying 10 minutes, I think, on small stuff, you can remove it from the mold. But I want to wait a while because I'm going to be cutting that can. I can feel it getting warm already, so it's starting to work. So I'm pouring it in here. And I notice the bubbles do come to the top. Sometimes I'll just breathe on it, and I think my breath helps it get up there. And I'm just going to let the camera run and see. That's not quite to my mark, but that's good. I wanted to save a little bit of it if I need, you know, something else, plastic part. I think I'm going to have to pick up some more of this stuff. But it is pretty nice stuff. And it feels like real plastic. I know the one guy on there was talking about this kind of stuff, and he made a part. When it was done, he took it and he threw it down on a piece of cement, and it didn't break. It was like he made a casting for a part, and it was it was kind of thin and everything. And I mean, he hit it hard. So I'm just going to let that set. I can throw all this stuff out and see what it's like in about an hour. But I can always fast forward the camera to show uh, it turning white 
all of a sudden it starts turning white. I can see a lot of bubbles. I was breathing on it. There it goes. That's quick. <laughs> that is quick. I can see a white or clear place down in there. It's like my breath helped it. I know uh, you used to get that hodgepodge. Now this is called Mod, mod Podge. It's different. But Hodgepodge was a clear coating. It was like shellac. And I believed, I think you mixed two parts. I can't remember, but you would uh, put your breath on it and you could just see the bubbles coming to the top. You could take a heat gun real light and do it. And uh, it was good for like a clear coating over wood and stuff, like you wanted to seal something in that. But this is true plastic, and I mean, it's fantastic. Ain't got much left after this, but that's, I think, the way to go. And I get my other thing arranged and put it on the lathe, and I have to get a little cutter the size, maybe make one of these, the gaps in between the teeth that's going to be spinning on the lathe, and then I'll just take this part and go back and forth, left and right, and cut them, turn it, cut it. So I don't even think it was a half an hour. I felt the can and it was really hot. So you can see I put it in a vise. I, I put it on its side like that in the vise and cut that with a hacksaw. And the part was loose in there. And it's still real, real warm. I mean, it's really, wow, it's really hot. It's still working, curing inside. But there, there it is. Now I'm, I wasted a lot making that the way I did, but I didn't want to mold it and fool around. I want to get it done. But there's my gear I'm going to make. And I got plenty on the outside to machine down to this size for the teeth. But I think first I'll cut, cut it back for this part. Face off the other side. Face off one side. Turn it around and then do it from there. Then cut this. And uh, it should work out pretty good. If I get the other thing where I can cut the teeth. I have it made. I can make my own gears. That is amazing. And I mean, that is some hard plastic. It's, it's terrific the way it is, how it works. So you could say you wanted a small part. You could pour it in this and leave it. Well, it might melt it. You might need paper cups. The plastic, I don't know if it would, it, it gets really hot. I'd put it in something else maybe. Or like I said, you can mold something. Uh, I don't know what I'd use. But you can pour it in there. Like I said, maybe putty I don't, or uh, Play-Doh, but it might get hot and sink in it more. You just have to experiment. And like I said, cano canola oil is the best to get it out. Because it's still wet with the canola oil. That really released it nice. It didn't stick to metal. That wood putty I was using over there, I was using that, it was sticking to it. That was the trouble. And when I try to get it apart, I just can't get it apart. But something like metal, it works great. That is, so <laughs> that is something else. That's unbelievable. Woo, that thing's still hot. So the next thing is on to machining it and see how it cuts. But I think it'll cut okay. Now that I want to machine this piece of plastic for the gear I want, I first put on my four jaw chuck, uh, put it on. I had to reverse the jaws, but what I did was is I brought them out to reverse them. I put some oil, and I use transmission oil. I found it really gets into things. I could use a little heavier, but I've been using transmission oil on most of this and the ways and everything. And what I did was I oiled everything, so when I turn it on, it's going to be flying out. So I tape paper towel on it. So now I turn it on. And that'll fling all the oil out into the paper towel. Run it like that, and I can see the oil spots on it from that coming out of the jaws. 
because uh, I want to sque- uh, shoot it in and get it on a thread on the jaw where it goes up and down. So now I'll turn this up a little bit. Move my belt over and run it just a little bit faster. took the paper towel off for me there it is ready to go so now I can put this in on the jaws and I'm gonna true it up the best I can and start facing it off and see how it cuts the Sun actually come out a little bit today it's about 42 out last night it was down below 30 degrees so I found my part this part it was a little too big to fit in the uh, four jaw chuck or yeah the four jaws uh, so I could line it up and everything so I'm gonna have to use the three no matter which way I turn the other jaws this would not fit in there and this is a 9 by 20 lathe so it's a small one uh, this is I made it three and three quarter inch that was the size of the can I poured it in so three and three quarter inch so I put out some layout die and what I want to do is find the exact middle. I want it as close as I can get it. I, I left myself some room in here for the gear to cut, you know, to get it down to the size I need. But I took a pair of these from Harbor Freight dividers. You can put a pencil in this side or use both of these. And what I did was on the next, I bought about three sets of these, four, no, three sets. So what I did was I took this and knocked it off it's just spot welded on you can just break that off took it off then I put a plate and I welded it on and it has a little notch in it you can see the design of it and this notch lines up when it's closed with this tip so that makes a set of morphodites now what you do with the morphodite is I put it on there and I get this just close to the middle lock it down real tight then I go like this and scribe it got my scribe line I turn it a quarter scribe it a quarter turn scribe it one more time scribe it now you can see I have the four scribe lines and that middle square right there right there would be the center of it so I can just like work this into it a little bit, center punch it, put it on a drill press, uh, drill it. What I might do is I have this big nut and I think I have some all thread that goes in here and maybe a nut that I could put a piece of all thread through there with a nut on, screw this on tight, maybe even put some washers under it, but I'll have it like that so that I can put it in a three jaw chuck and turn it. But I made these a good while back. I had showed them on uh, one of my YouTube things about making morphodites. Then the other one I had was I did the same thing. Took this off, and this is JB Weld, and I made a little ball. I put it in a vise like this when I went to do this to make it real nice, and I shoe shined it back and forth and got it to that real almost perfect round. I put uh, super glue down in there, and what it is is. If I have, say I had a hole in this already, and I want to find a line out here. Well, you could go on the edges, but maybe you can't get that morphodite in there. Well, this is ball dividers. You set it right down in that hole, and say you wanted to come out that far. That's how big you're making your part, to just to get it close. You can put this down in a hole, put layout die on it and just turn it like that and the hole will hold this it'll go like that and you can scribe so that's uh, ball dividers I made so get a hole drilled in this find a thing so I can put it through there and when I'm working with the jaws I always put a piece of board down this is thin stuff 
but just in case I bump, and a lot of times I do when I'm taking these on and off, you'll bump those ways. I want to keep them nice. And as this uh, plastic kit I used, mix half and half, to make this part uh, for plastic, that kit cost, I think, 17, a little over $17. I think it was $17.59 free shipping. So that was a price on this. And that, that gives you two bottles, eight ounce each. So you got 16 ounces. And uh, I'll tell you what, you can make, make parts. There's my furnace. Come on, I got it fixed. <laughs> So I'll do that and then come back to it. I'm anxious to see how it machines. It should machine all right because man that got hard but man did it get hot you know when I first poured it. It started cooling down. I just left it cool down. You don't want to put it under cold water or nothing. Let it cool down itself and I kept feeling the middle of it stayed hot for a long time. I just let it set overnight. Then it's cold. It's real hard. I mean really hard. That is some nice plastic. I have the center punch mark to drill my hole and I'd like to use this. This will thread down on there. It'll go the whole way down so that this will be in here. But one thing I got to make sure of is this is the part I'm making. That this fits through there. If, it, if I get that hole there too big I need a little bit to true up in the machine. Well it fits and it's got some play. It's big, it's smaller, so that'll work. So, whatever size this is, I'll uh, mic it and get a drill bit close to that uh, that size. I don't want to go any bigger because when I cut this and have it in the lathe and cut it and everything, I want to bore this out to make it centric with the outside edge. And I, I have not much but this will work. I just got to be careful with it. What I did was I mic this rod and it's 490 thousandths across for that to fit in there. I calipered the hole in the part that I'm going to make and it's, uh, let me think, 450 thousandths. So that gives me, and I write everything down, stick it right here where I'm working. So the rod's 490, the finished hole that I'm going to end up with when I bore this out is 450. Well that is 40 thousandths difference. So that only gives me 20 thousandths on the side. Well if I have this in there and it happens to work a little bit pushing on it or something like that, I'm going to ruin this. Uh, you could probably pour the inside maybe, but I don't want to. So this rod's no good. So I found I had this bolt. It looks like threads are a little bit messed up, but I can work that down so I can get this. But it'll work the same. I can put the uh, nut in here and it'll, it'll turn it. So uh, my finished hole is 450. This rod is 363 thousandths across here. So if I figure it out, that gives me 87 thousandths from this to that. So that would be about 43 thousandths uh, on both sides. So 40, for 43 thousandths, that's a lot better than 20. That'll give me a little extra play. So this is a rod I'll go with and I always get my size up here I'm working with and put it so I don't have to go back and do it. And when I do a job like this that I'm working really close, I grab these mics. I have several pairs uh, I grabbed this mic. Now I'm going to use it throughout this whole project. I don't want to go grab another one. Now the hole I have to caliper, I have inside mics, uh, but I just calipered it because when I drill it out and I'm uh, fixing this, you know, I can go back and forth and check and make sure. I'll use the calipers for that and this. But for right now to get this size up here that I have, this is close enough. But I'll lay these over there and that's what I'll be using. Anything I want to mic on this job, that's what I'll do. Because when I cut this, get this in there, face it off, down, uh, the bolt will be in there of course, you know, to it as close as I can. The rest I can just take off with uh, a file or whatever. 
but then I have to make this piece here. I'll mic it with this. When I cut it, I'll use the same mics. So I'll put the size up here and I'll go by it and I'll get it real close. This, I think, isn't as critical. It can be a little bigger or smaller. And uh, let me look in the back. Uh, yeah, it can be bigger. There's nothing around it. So I could actually maybe go another 20 thousandths, even, uh, yeah, that'd be 10 on the side, even 30 thousandths bigger than this for the plastic, my plastic. But because uh, there's nothing back here, it'll hit. So you have to take all this into consideration. And I've been good at this kind of stuff, and my stuff works out so good most times. You know, I have failures. But the one thing is, like I said, when I go to do the teeth on this, I'm either going to have to make a cutter for in there, which wouldn't, I could probably do it, take my time and really get it just perfect. But I'm going to look and see. Uh, I know there's a gauge they make for checking these teeth. I'd love to have one of those where I could check it then I could send and get a little cutter for it, which would be perfect. And all I'd have to do is get the depth on it, set it there, and then cut back and forth. I'd probably cut like maybe three times through there because I don't want to take one full cut. You know, I'd have like three positions on the lathe to get at that depth. And then I would take like I get up in the morning, uh, even though I sleep late, <laughs> I'd get up in the morning when I'm fresh and I'd start cutting out and I'd cut until I get them all done so I know how far to go in, how to go out. I'd mark it on a paper just in case I get called away for something. But that would be good to cut all these the one day and, you know, do that first and get it done when I go to cut it. I have a lot more to do on my cutter I'm setting up for the lathe, figuring it out, welding it where I can mount it on my uh, cross slide. But, I mean, it's just... I could have bought one of these for probably 50, 50, 60 bucks maybe, plastic. But I thought, I'm gonna make one. Wouldn't it feel great if you have one and you put it in there and it works great and you say, I made that whole thing. So I'm gonna go for it. <laughs> That's the way you do.